Coming up on Campus Connection, we take a look at how students are able to stay cool in the hot weather. Also, we check out the people's state of the city. Then we go live to the Daily Ford Banner to find out what's happening around campus. And we take a look at the Innovation Challenge Awards, all this and coming up. Welcome to Campus Connection. I'm Steve Savala. And I'm Sierra Robles. Project Chill took place this Wednesday near the Friendship Walk at Cal State Long Beach. Hammocks were set up all across the lawn where students took a nap, read a book, or just scrolled through their phones. Before heading to the hammocks, the only thing students had to do was sign a waiver and grab an otter popsicle. Jadaki Hill tells about his experience. That's why I came, I was like, man, I need a little, just, just, if it's only like 10 minutes, I just need a little 10 minutes just to lay down and get back up. That's all I needed. Just like Hill, many students stopped by and lay down on the hammocks. Some students came up with their group of friends, others came alone. There's two more Project Chill events coming up on May 1st and May 14th on the Friendship Walk. The Daily 49er has been connecting with students for years. Zach Handy is at the newsroom with more. I'm here at the Daily 49er where students have been tackling news for the past 70 years here on campus. From sports and film, to politics and immigration, and everything in between, they cover it all. Let's go inside and check out this week's headlines. Even a Sunday afternoon isn't a rest day for the Daily 49er. A crew of journalists are inside editing stories, finishing designs, and polishing up everything that goes into finishing a print edition for Monday morning. E everything the students are working on now will show up in tomorrow's edition first thing in the morning. Two stories broke from the Daily 49er last week. Uh, Troy Buckley, the head coach of the Dirtbags, was fired after nine seasons, and this was due to work-related violence. You can read more about it at the Daily 49er. The news was broken by staff writer Robert Holler via Twitter on Thursday afternoon. Holler tweeted that the decision came from athletic director Andy Fee and that it was to be effective immediately. The Dirtbags would go on to win their next two games under the new tenure of pitching coach Dan. And the second story is there's, um, a, there's a ballot for a new mascot. Um, there's six new candidates, and you can read all about it at the Daily 49er. The long-awaited arrival of the ballot for a new mascot has finally happened. Yeah, I did. Uh, I the students have the choice of either the Kraken, the Sharks, the Pelicans, or simply just the beach. Students can go and read the article and find out where to vote inside the Daily 49er. This is Campus Connection. I'm Zach Handy. Resident, residents of Long Beach celebrate the persistent efforts to be heard in City Hall in the people's state of the city. They boast their desire to have their neighborhoods be priorities among council members. Maria Cubillo has more for us. The sanctuary was packed on Thursday night at the First Congregational Church on Cedar Avenue in downtown Long Beach. An older woman expressed her fear of losing her neighbor due to the high cost of living in the city. In the poem reading of My Long Beach, the various poets express their frustrations and hopes in multiple languages. Those in attendance listen and only voice their names or names to what the speaker was talking about. The speaker calls out to the mayor to seat members in the Budget Oversight Committee who will have the interests in mind of people in poor districts, and the crowd agrees. <laughs> the people gathered, celebrated, two community members who lobbied into wee hours of the night in city council meetings and who were able to secure funding for immigrant rights and youth opportunities. But how did this organizing begin? The way it came together was because community felt there was a need to talk about what was happening in the community from their perspective. Upcoming organizing includes walking out on May 1st and participating in the 2020 census. Maria Isabel Cubillo for Campus Connections. 
The 2019 Innovation Challenge had four teams of CSUB students competing for a grand prize. Reporter Leslie Villiz attended the awards ceremony at the Walter Pyramid and has more about this year's winning business pitch. The Innovation Challenge is a business plan competition. Student teams work for months to pitch their business ideas to a panel of judges. The winner this year is Sips Cold Brew. Sips Cold Brew offers high quality brewed coffee and a delivery service for students as part of a membership subscription. Um, all the support, all the resources through the Innovation Challenge has been amazing. The mentors, the incubator, everyone's been so helpful. We're just privileged to win. There's a lot of good teams, a lot of good pitches today. Sips Cold Brew wants to bring cold brew straight to dorm rooms and give students another option besides going to a coffee shop. The Innovation Challenge took place here at the Point Conference Center. The winning prize is $50,000. Sips Cold Brew plans to use this money for social media, marketing, and building an online platform to sell their cold brew. The four finalist teams had very unique business ideas. From a vegan food delivery service to an app that finds locations to recycle batteries. But ultimately, Sips Cold Brew took the winning prize. They had done the research and some marketing, and they also seemed to put together their costs. Sips Cold Brew is excited to launch and bring their product to the market. They believe this should be the top coffee choice for students. We're not just a different option, we're the better option. Something that's more fresh, less preservatives, something that will make them feel better when they're drinking it. Sips Cold Brew plans to launch in the fall of 2019 at CSULB. They will offer weekly deliveries to students of their cold brew in a 32-ounce jug. Leslie Valise, Campus Connection. After the break, we'll take a look at how students are on campus for raising awareness for victims of sexual assault. We'll see how students celebrate the culture and history of Israel. And we'll take a look at one way the Student Recreation and Wellness Center gets to students to stay at. All this and more Hi, coming up. I'm Peter. There's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. Planning the right amount of food is hard. The guesstimator makes it easy. Just tell it who's coming and what's for dinner. Then it tells you how much to make. And yes, it even plans for leftovers. Try it at savethefood.com. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. No doubt you're going places, young lady. Thank you. And thank you for the interview as well. I can imagine it was the last thing that you wanted to do after such a long campaign meeting. You really are a very intelligent young woman. You're very smooth. You're very smooth yourself. <laughs> you have no idea. Welcome back. Unity and support was at Atmosphere present this past Wednesday, April 10th, in the Los Alamitos room as students came together to speak out against sexual misconduct. Students gathered at the annual Take Back the Night event to show support to those that have been victims of sexual assault. The event is hosted by the Women's Gender and Equity Center and includes a guest speaker and a safe and private environment for students to speak out. Bringing an important message to campus that it's, you know, Take Back the Night is bringing that awareness about violence um, against women and it's also kind of bringing awareness about sexual assault prevention. This year's guest speaker was Aileen Arden. Arden is an LGBTQ Armenian singer and songwriter 
She spoke about her path toward healing after keeping quiet about her own sexual assault for 35 years. Arden also debuted the music video to her song, I'm Through, which interpreted her own sexual assault survival story. I'm here to share my story of my experience and um, my Me Too story, which just recently came out within myself about three years ago, and I'm still on this healing process. She also wrote a song for the event titled, Take Back the Night. She says the song is a dedication to not only victims, but also to herself after keeping silent for so long. During a portion of the program, students gathered outside the USU and began to march around campus. They held signs and chanted phrases of empowerment. Other events that will also take place during Sexual Assault Awareness Month includes a screening of the documentary Roll Red Roll and Denim Day. Any students seeking support are encouraged to reach out to Not Alone at the Beach, located at the Student Health Services. Rosa Ojeda, Campus Connection. Students enjoyed a festive atmosphere that was part of a fun-filled afternoon that celebrated all things Israel. The student body of Cal State Long Beach had the unique opportunity to immerse themselves in the rich history of Israel this past Thursday at the 2019 Israel Fest. Our own event this whole week is Israel Week where we're celebrating Israel, its culture. We're trying to avoid conflicts and push, push our... The event focused on everything positive. The event focused on everything positive that Israel has to offer. Those that dropped by were treated to live music, a photo booth for silly photo ops, and could get henna tattoos relating to Jewish and Israeli culture. Friday nights at the Rockwell has been a recent hit. Sierra Robles shares some more details. The Student Recreation and Wellness Center is a local spa on campus where students can go work out during their free time. Um, at the SRWC, we also offer uh, classes uh, for rock climbing, uh, from belay basics to uh, lead climbing and also uh, movement and technique. Every Friday this month, the Student and Recreation and Wellness Center is offering game night at the Rock Wall, where students can join and play games like Twister, Ninja Ball, and many more. During rock climbing sessions, the SRWC staff make sure to stand by the students who are learning how to climb. I do a lot of uh, rock climb training over here just to make sure I stay fit. Mm -hmm. Staying fit is one of the many reasons students come to the rock wall. It's a chance to meet other students as well. Um, backpacking, hiking, camping, and rock climbing all outdoors. We also offer yoga outdoors. The staff make sure to help students become more proactive. Sierra Robles, Campus Connection. That was a lot of fun. We're only half through, halfway through the semester but of April and there has been plenty of events going on around campus. Jennifer Rodriguez will catch you up on what has happened so far. Thanks guys, so far it has been a great week. This month, ASI pays tribute to Asian and Pacific Islanders by honoring their, her their culture in a spectacular way. Starting the week with music and food, ASI's noontime events celebrated Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month with a kickoff. The event, hosted by the Office of Multicultural Affairs and ASI, was brought to life with a performance from the Hikari Taiko drummers. Students were given the chance to do some origami and try their hand at playing ceremonial drums. More events celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander heritage are scheduled throughout the rest of April. To find out more, head over to the ASI event calendar on their website. And on Monday, CSULB students gathered in the Central Quad to honor the late rapper, entrepreneur, and community leader, Nipsey Hussle. The students shared their stories and thoughts, lit candles, and released balloons in his honor. The vigil held by the Black Student Union ended with a discussion about ways to continue his community-driven legacy. This past week, students were given the opportunity to listen to professionals in the podcasting industry. The panel, hosted by 22 West, introduced students to professionals in the field. The panelists spoke about their journey getting into the industry and gave students insight on what it takes to be a distinguishable podcaster. Students also took notes and in enjoyed some snacks. That is all for entertainment news this week. Back to you. After the break, we'll talk more about a project whose goal is to break the silence about violence. We'll catch up with Nicole Salvatierra to see some over-the-top cars featured in the Grand Prix. And we'll hear all the updates on the Long Beach State soft water ball. This and more coming up. 
<laughs> Maria, so how's work? It was fourth period biology. Our students just weren't getting how easily viruses spread. So Ms. Bell and I had them role play a zombie virus outbreak. By the time they had all learned the lesson, all the living were dead. Hey, how's your job going? That big sales meeting I planned? Next year, I might get to go. <clears throat> cool. 150 over 90. 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. <laughs> Welcome back to Campus Connection. In honor of Sexual Assault Awareness Month, the Young Women's Christian Association and the Women's of Gender Equity Center hosted the annual Clothesline Project on Wednesday. The event is held at many universities across the country every year to bring awareness to gender-based violence and sexual assault. Students contributed by making a t-shirt with the message or illustration of a personal story to honor survivors of violence. Among its goals, the Clothesline Project called to break the silence about silence. It is a good thing that we are addressing the issue and making other people aware of it because it's not something normally talked about in our society. The project provided to a platform to educate and hold a safe space for discussion on sexual violence. The visual display of t-shirts allowed for students to reflect on the journey of survivors. Long Beach hosted its annual Grand Prix event this past weekend. Residents got a chance to get a close view of some of the over-the-top cars in the, at the Roar in the Shore event. Let's join Nicole Salvatiria as she guides us through the action. Engines roar and crowds cheer in anticipation for the 2019 Acura Grand Prix, the longest-running street race in North America. To kick off the race weekend, the Long Beach community is invited to the 8th annual Roar in the Shore bringing the Grand Prix weekend to your neighborhood. It's a very friendly kind of an environment for everybody to come out and just have some fun. The community had the chance to sit behind the wheels of the exotic cars on display and meet the racing teams. The competitors from Racers Edge Motorsports asked to take part in the event in appreciation for the Long Beach community. A lot of times when you do a street race like this, it's like it, it's sort of happening, but it's like annoying to everybody. It's sort of in the way. This one, it's part of the culture here and it's really interesting the way the whole city gets involved in it. Crossing 2nd Street, there's more fun as people gather around to watch Tony Carbajal's motorcycle team pop wheelies and perform other tricky maneuvers. So behind me is the stage for the sports bike freestyle, which is a fan favorite. After the shows, people are able to go get autographs by the performers. For some Long Beach residents, having an event like this in their backyard is an honor. I take, I take advantage of having such a world-class sporting event like this here in my area. Race weekend consists of other off-track activities for everyone, including more exotic car displays, a lifestyle expo, and car simulators. Nicole Salvatierra, Campus Connection. Long Beach State Women's Volleyball hosted the Cal Bears on Friday in a top 25 matchup. Sports reporter Zach Coleman has more. Thanks, Sierra. It was an eventful week in, weekend in sports here at the beach. On Thursday, head baseball coach Troy Buckley was fired after reports of workplace violence. The incident happened after a recent baseball game where Buckley had to be physically held back when he tried to go after another university employee. There were no student-athletes involved in the altercation. 
The Dirtbags are in the midst of one of the worst seasons in program history, but athletic director Andy Fee says the team's record does not play a factor into Buckley's firing. Associate head coach Greg Bergeron and pitching coach Dan Rickable will take over as interim head coaches for the remainder of the season. Women's beach volleyball had a big matchup on Friday as they hosted UC Berkeley on the Bill Lovelace Sand Courts. Long Beach came into the match with a 17-7 record, while Cal entered with a record of 17-5. In the first matchup of the day, Kendra Kowelsch and Kenzie Holtz represented the beach in the four spot. The duo got off to a hot start here as Holtz sets it to Kowelsch, who returns the opening serve with an emphatic spike. The two duos would go back and forth in the first set. Now leading 20 to 19, Kowelsch to serve for set point. Cal returns it, but Holtz is there. Sets it up and buries it into the back row. The beach would win. The beach takes the first set, 21 to 19. Holtz and Kowelsch would continue to roll in the second set. Holtz with another well-placed spike, and Cal is unable to return. Now leading 20 to 12, Holtz serving for match point. Cal sets up a return but Kowelsch is there and blocks it to put an exclamation point on their win. On the next court over, the number two duo of Zoe Constantopoulou and Nikki Ranking were in a tight battle. The Beach won the first set 21 to 16, but Cal would battle back in the second set 21 to 19. In the third set, the Beach regained momentum with several big plays from Zoe. Late in the third set, Zoe, dropping back, has to dive, makes the save, and gets right back up on her feet to send the ball over. Cal would be unable to return, and the Beach would win the point. They're pumped. The duo would go on to win the third set, 15 to 8. From there, the wheels started to fall off for the Beach. Cal would take control and win the next two games to, take the, to tie the match at two apiece. Long Beach's number one duo, Mari Molina and Megan Krudoff, lost their first set, but they fought back in the second set to force a decisive third set. However, it was all Cal after that. Megan Krudoff would be denied on back-to-back -back points. In the end, Long Beach would fall three games to two. The beach volleyball team will be back in action this afternoon against St. Mary's College. Long Beach State's volley men's volleyball team earned a hard-fought 3-2 victory over Hawaii this weekend. The team is now the number one seed in the Big West Conference and has earned a bye into the semifinals of the tournament. Let's hear what reporter Sonia De Los Santos has to say about this weekend's win. Long Beach men's volleyball team is playing against top-ranked Hawaii in order to determine who will be heading into the conference okay. tournament next week. focus on us. We had to not carry the stress and let them carry it. We had to make sure we stayed focused on the next play and tried to side out whether we lost the play or not. Beach State men's volleyball team players feel confident in their strategies and will not rest until they are victorious this season. Long Beach has ranked number one against Hawaii. We had a big win against Hawaii. And uh, basically how it came down to it, how we prepared is we just put a lot of hard work in these past few weeks. We have a, a goal each week that we come in as a team and prepare and everyone puts in work. And we, we keep saying to each other, it's all about getting one to two percent better per individual and then collectively as a team. Palm Beach State men's volleyball team won their match against Hawaii, its first loss of the season in front of an electrifying crowd. Sonia De Los Santos, Campus Connection. The Beach will play the winner of the quarterfinals match between UC Santa Barbara and Cal State Northridge. The semifinal match will be this Friday, April 19th. Well, that's all for sports. Back to you guys. That does it for Campus Connection. I'm Steve Savala. And I'm Sierra Robles. Thanks for watching.